Hey everyone, welcome to the first video, Toys for All Ages. I'm Jonah, this is my son Dash. Hi. And today we're talking about the Star Wars Power of the Force Electronic Power FX X-Wing. Yep. Uh, don't forget to like and subscribe. Leave comments, reviews, as long as they're positive, right? Mm-hmm. Alright, let's get started. But first, let's say what we're doing here. We are going to show the toy from an adult's perspective That's right. and a kid's perspective. Yeah, so I'll give you two different takes on it, right? A child collector and an adult collector. Um, I want to first <laughs> say that I've been collecting toys since before I was born. How about you? You what? <laughs> <laughs> How long have you been collecting toys? <laughs> One year. One year? And I already have more than that. All right. Yeah. Are you talking Star Wars toys specifically one year? Now, if you recall, do you remember when we decided we were going to start collecting Star Wars toys? I just bought a ship and then you copied me. <laughs> no, no. We were watching the Rise of Skywalker in the theater. We got out of the theater and decided, you know what? I want to start collecting some Star Wars toys. I already had lots of G.I. Joe toys, lots of Transformers toys. I don't have any... Or Let's didn't just have any. So we already have begun. This is it. Let's open the box. <laughs> so he wants to get this thing opened up. Before we open up the box, why don't you give us your thoughts on the box? What's your take on this? I like um, every Power of the Force box has this nice green look to it. Also, um, we don't know if the batteries work. Yeah, that's one of the things I'm scared with when you buy these things that are still mint in box. Because it looks like with the Try Me features, this may have already had the batteries connected to it. Uh, this toy came out in 1998. So we just gotta hope a kid doesn't. You consider how. We just hope a kid doesn't just keep flipping the switches over and over again. Yeah, I'd be more concerned about like battery corrosion. Now, when this thing came out, how much do you think it retailed for? What would what would you think sitting on a store shelf this would have retailed for? Uh, fifty bucks because um, electronics were new with toys. Yeah, you're right on. It was like fifty dollars at retail. Now, and if you think of it, we paid just a little over that because we got this on sale at J C D and Hobby. Now they're not a sponsor of the show yet. <laughs> no, that was not right. <laughs> but. Uh, that's where I like to get all of my vintage Star Wars toys. They got the best selection of stuff around. So three locations around the Des Moines, Iowa area. Be sure to check them out. Jay's CD and Hobby. All right, this has already opened up. Do we dig this thing out and see what we got? All right, you've done a good job describing the box. Let's see what's inside. I'll take it out and I'll show the back of the box. Okay, perfect. You do that. Here's the back of the box. We have all the features with it. But I know people don't like to look at the back of the box because they don't want to uh, spoil the features. All right, so here's what we got. This thing is... I thought I was going to need scissors to get that out, but I didn't really. <laughs> so we've got the fuselage of the ship. Wait, we got to find the battery. Oh, where's the battery at? You can do that. we got the S-foils, the handle, missile. Got it. Uh, pass me the screwdriver. Laser cannons. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna crack this thing open and see if we can't get it to work. We've got some batteries for this. this one. Now, while you're doing that, talk a little bit about when we were actually trying to decide on a first video to do why we decided on the X-wing fighter. What was your take on that? Why the X-wing? Well, it's one it's a, one of the most popular ships in Star Wars, and we could have got the small one, but we wanted to go big for the first video. Oh yeah, they did. They had two in stock, didn't they? They had the um, the electronic X-wing fighter, which was a bit smaller scale and a little bit of a cheaper price tag, and that was also mint in the box, right? Mm -hmm. And then this one, which had a, was a larger scale uh, and a little bit of a of a higher price tag. Are you able to get that? You need a hand? Uh, yeah. Okay, I'll tell you what. So. I agree with you. The X-Wing fighter, uh, most popular, definitely the most iconic of the Star Wars fighters, um, I would say. Would you agree with that? Yeah, you might, you might want to unscrew it more. Are you sure this is the battery compartment? Yeah, look. I know the X-Wing growing up was always one of my favorite uh, vehicle designs. I never had it as a kid. But it was definitely one that I always wanted. What is your favorite vehicle design? Oh, look, there's no batteries in it. Let's go! So now we're going to see if this thing works. So as you can see, no batteries. The electronics look clean. I'll show it how to get it in. Yeah. There we go. Sorry, I'm a YouTube noob. All right, I'm so, pro. <laughs> so let's plug this in here. All right, so again, no idea if this is going to work or not. But uh, Well, before we just let batteries in, let's try the features. Let's try it out. Wait, we should construct it first. 
Yeah, so as far as constructing it, it looks like it's fairly simple. We've got, uh, oh, oh, I hear something. So there's a handle that you can plug into there. Oh, yeah, there's lamp jets. Yep, you've got the S-foils. I'll list off all the, I'll list off all the features. First, electronic laser cannon blast. Light up engine thrust. Press R2-D2 for engine lights, sounds, and on an authentic move it dialogue. Wings open into attack position. Cockpit opens. Target computer lights up. And that is about it. So this thing came in the box, but you know my take on this is it was probably, someone had probably opened this up at one point, uh, put, because I believe it came with stickers. So put stickers on it, and then uh, had put it back into the, I think I already messed this up. Probably already. I already put, yeah, I already put it together backwards. Oh, Dad is such a noob. I, I already told you that. All right, we'll figure that out. Dad! So we'll get all, we'll get all this put together. Don't that. I'm, I'm, it's it. all right! Is it? Okay. All right, well, why don't you finish putting it together? And while you're doing that, I've got another surprise for you, because we talked about how there was two vehicles there to choose from. There was the larger one and the smaller one. And we opted to go with the... Uh, the larger one, right? Yes. Well, I couldn't help myself. I had to go back and buy the smaller one, too. What? So we actually have what? both of them to open up. Now, we're probably not going to open this one up on video necessarily, but I do want to compare uh, the two, actually. So, yeah, let me tear this in. Oh, see, this one is the one that came with stickers, so... Now this is a smaller scale. This is a, a, a scale much closer to the original uh, vintage one, which I never had as a kid. Um, but again, always was fascinated by it. You can even see the size detail here, the difference in just the laser cannons. Look at this. What's the size difference? Take a look. What? Oh, wow. Yeah, a lot, a lot different. I would have been really sad if it was like we got the smaller one. I was gonna, that's, so that was going to be my next question to you, is if we had just gone with the smaller one, uh, what would your take have been? Sad. Sad? Sad. Because of the scale or because of, you know, what specifically? The um, scale. The scale, yeah. But it's always nice to get um, X-Wings. Well, I'm smarter than you, obviously, because I have... Um, Got yeah, those about on there? Excellent. Here we go. So this is the smaller one. Mm -hmm. What's your take on it? You know, it, it's... So, again, I didn't have one of these as a kid, but I had some friends that did, so I had a chance to play with them a little bit. And it was always a fun toy. It was always cool. Um, this looks very similar. I know the mold is a little bit different. There's, a lot, there's some different detailing on this than there is on the other one. Um, but yeah, the, um, yeah, it's cool. Looks like you put your wings on backwards. No, I didn't. See? They're right there. They're right there. No, they're not. Look at the box. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to get that corrected. You don't have to do it right now while we're talking. No, we have to. <laughs> Just, um, review that one. <laughs> So again, this is a, uh, a much smaller size than the, uh, than the one you're toying around with there. They, this one came out a few years before. I believe this one came out in 95, if I'm not mistaken. And uh, What would you think this one would have retailed for, Dash? 20 to 30. You're, again, you're really good with that. This retailed for 19.99. I am smarter than you. So $20. So yep, I'm smarter. Good call. Now this one's got some stickers that we can apply. It's got uh, some instructions as well. I don't know that you necessarily need the instructions other than to apply the stickers. This one also uh, has some electronic capabilities. And if you see this here, push down on the uh, top of the head. And then, can you like show that to camera? And that expands the S-foils. And then pull back this little blue lever, and that okay. drops the S-foils. So you've got your attack position. This one also electronic with lights and sounds. And we'll get some other, we'll get some batteries for that one too. Uh, one of my favorite things about these old toys, see here we got a sticker sheet so we can put some stickers on it. Instructions uh, for the sticker sheet. 
Oh, this is this is neat. I love these types of things that they would put with uh, toys. Uh, G.I. Joe toys always had these as well with the sticker sheet. You always had these great uh, blueprints. The show this for camera? Yep. Yep, that's good. Well, I have... All right, hold on. Finished. One of your ones is still backwards. Well, you mean... Uh, what? <laughs> going two different directions. Say it. <laughs> I'm so bad at this. What are you doing? I remember my first time putting a toy together. One of, the, one of the other things I love about these old toys, too, are the catalog booklets that these things came with that give you an idea as to what other toys looked like back at that time. And, uh, and these are great things. So, while you're, I know you're, you're finishing that up, and we're going to get the video finished up here because I don't want to you know, take too much of uh, people's time. And we're going to do some more of these types of videos. We're going to talk about some other vehicles. And in fact, I've already got an idea planned for what our next one is going to be. It's not a unboxing where there's, he's not going to have to uh, fiddle with putting anything together. Exactly. But um, what we're going to uh, look at is a couple of the Rogue One toys. Because when I was researching online before I purchased these toys, there was a lot of, uh, you know, a lot of hatred towards the Nerf features that these toys had. And because of that, I really didn't have any interest in them for a long time. And it wasn't until, you know, I kind of decided to forget what the reviews were saying and check them out for myself. And I really, really like them. And so they're uh, great toys. And we're going to take a look at those and, and talk about those Nerf features. And and, uh, and I want to get his take on it as well as, as a kid because that's really what they were or who they were marketed towards. So any, um, any, what are your thoughts on this vehicle as you're putting it together? One of the things that we've noticed is... Okay, you can build out the top. Okay, one of the things we noticed is the figure itself on this one, Dashiell, yes. is not removable. Nope. So he is he is stuck in there, right? And uh, it's really just a bust of a figure. We need to put batteries in this one. Yeah, we'll get batteries for that one. But we're not removing this one. Here's uh, I'll be right back. Where are you going? Uh, I'm going to check how much time this has on the video. You don't have to leave to do that. I'm just going to... Good. So, what are your thoughts on the details with this one? I like it already. You know, as you're as you're kind of looking at it, as we're finishing putting it together, talk about these electronics. What do these oh, things do? Oh, this one's on the bottom. The electronics. Um, back then, electronics were really cool in toys. Every like, ki uh, most kids just had normal ones, but most um, these ones are back then. Too. Most uh, families just had normal ones, but some kids had electronic ones, and this was what this one is. Fifty bucks was pretty expensive for a toy. You think so? Yeah, except we spent. No, I mean, well, again, we got it on sale, right? Yeah. We got it twenty percent right. off, so we got it. See on the box. Yep. Oh wait, no, we're right. We're right. Okay. Yep, we're right. Okay, so we are done. Pretty much put together, right? Looks yep. pretty good. Okay. Uh, now all we have to figure it out is how to open up the wings. Do that. Right here. Hold on, I got you. Check this out. Right here in the back. So the reason I know it works like that is because I have the X-Wing from the Vintage Collection that does the exact same thing. So you push down that lever, pull that over to the side. And then it activates some features. Yep, you got some sound features. Oh, this has a trigger. Oh, okay. Yep, you so got a missile you can put them, right here in the bottom. You can put them, oh, this has a Nerf gun, but it doesn't shoot Nerf parts. Yeah, it's so just a spring-loaded spring missile launcher. You've got this great Luke Skywalker bust in here. Uh, he doesn't come out. It's really just half a figure, right? It's just a torso and yeah. a head put in there. But his head moves. Let's um, let's show this up to the camera. Yep. So uh, here we um, here we have the uh, X-wing right here inside the cockpit. If you guys can see that, yeah, you can. So you, there's a little target board that will light up. And um, we'll activate that. And we have also a turning thing where they turn. So nothing will come out, even R2-D2, which is yep. sad, but... Look at the size comparison here. Check this out. See, make sure you guys can get that on the camera. See the difference in those sizes? And um, once you install the handle, you can't uninstall the handle. No, I bet I can take that off. Look, it actually folds up. Oh, okay. I so you don't have to uninstall it. You can actually just fold it out of the way when you're. Let's when you're see how far it. this thing shoots. You want to shoot the missile? Yes. All right. I'm gonna go over here, and you guys are gonna 
guys can watch it. Are you gonna shoot it at me? No, I'm gonna shoot it. Oh god. Something fell off. So we'll have it right here. And... Oh yeah, I was locking it. That was um Well yeah, I shot about two and a half feet. Yeah, that was really sad. So one of the things I like about this figure, or this toy here, the smaller one, the nostalgia that it brings back. Because again, this is the very similar to the one that I would have played with when I was five, six years old, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, so this one brings back a lot of memories. That being said, this one here is definitely a much cooler, a much cooler version, even with the, the figure that doesn't come out. That's but usually one of those things that would kind of kill it for me as a kid. Sometimes it's nice not to have a figure come out. So like when you're playing and, and the hatch opens and he just falls out, then he's dead. Your imagination just dies. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. All right, closing thoughts before we uh, wrap this up. Do you think it's a good buy? Uh, yes. Happy I you've got this added to your collection? Yes, I want to put my, um, so you already said your perspective. I'm going to use my perspective now. Yep. My perspective is, this is perfect if you want to play with it. I bet you shouldn't give your kid, like, if he's five, because he'll just drop it, and you don't want that happening. So we should change the name from Toys for All Ages to Toys for anyone who's not six, five. Yes, six not five. Up. Um, what I notice here is, um, it wobbles. From the S-foils? Yeah. It wobbles. Yeah, I think it's probably just from the from the basic design be yeah. because you've got that internal component of those S foils being able to open up like that. Um, they're not they're not you know stationary. I guess would be the best word for it. I have it. a question. Do you they're think, not affixed permanently. Do you think this is a good electron chip? Like some... I would say that like it says it's electronic chip like this one did, but this one only has one feature to it. I would say. But this one does have features, except um, it like doesn't like really. It looks like on the box it, has, it says it has a lot of features, but really it only has like three or four. Yeah. So as far as the different things that it does, I know that what I like about this, you've got this lever here on the back. Mm -hmm. That's going to slide up the the targeting screen. Yep. You've got this other lever here. This actually rotates. R2-D2's head, as well as Luke Skywalker's head. They both move. And I don't know if you can see that in the video, but you see here, both of those move, which is very cool. I'll just show them that. Oh. Um, also, I have a question. It said something about the thrusters lighting up. How do you light up the thrusters? Uh, let's see here. There you go. Oh, yes. Push down our 2 d 2s head, and those thrusters will light up. How about we um, turn this thing into the dark and see how it looks? Uh, you kill the lights. I bet it's going to look pretty good. Okay, activate the buttons in three, two, one. I do. Okay. Uh, okay. Oh, R2 oh, lights R2 up, too. R2 do lights up. So when you push his head down different times, it's, it's doing different things. Wait. Alright, kill uh, put the lights back on. Let's get this wrapped up. Oh there we go. Thrusters in the dark. Alright. Alright, so what do you think? Uh I think goodbyes all around? Yes. Wh think. Which one of these are you gonna play with more? That one. This one? How much was it? Uh, retailed for 20 Yes. If you, like, don't want to buy... On, on the secondary market, in the box, these are going for about... I think I saw them anywhere from, like, 50 to 70 not including shipping. I just think, um, look how much detail difference. Zoe, can you bring down the camera? Well, keep in mind, too, this one's got a sticker sheet that's unapplied. So yes. this one will look a bit different once we get those stickers applied to it. But still, like... I feel like the plastic's just a lot more cheaper, you know? I can see what you're saying there. The plastic's a bit uh, uh, sturdier on this one, right? Yeah. I can see that. What you want to look for today in, um, like, any type of flying device, 
is um how cheap the plastic is. You don't want like if you want something cheap, I get it, but like you don't want something that's so cheap that it's just not like it doesn't look good. Yeah, I, I know exactly what you're saying. All right. So, like I said, next time I want to talk about the uh, the U-Wing and the TIE Striker from the Rogue One series that we have with the mm -hmm. Nerf Gun features and get your take on that. Uh, any closing remarks before we go? Uh, you, uh, this is probably, um, if you ever want an X-Wing, this is a must-buy. This is um, a thing you can't get. So this is the one you can live without, you think? Yes. This one is really a must for anyone's collection, is what you're saying? Yes. Okay, excellent. I think we're going to wrap up this video. Please like and subscribe. And I'll see you guys next time. Thanks, everybody.